Tuning in for some movie reviews Film flickers and movie reviews Let's hear those movie reviews Film flickers and movie reviews And action! Hi flickers! Hello and Happy New Year! We are back and today we are, well, we're not quite reviewing a film that one of you uh, asked for but we are leading up to that. Yeah, we, we got the request through and we thought, well, it's number two in a series so actually we thought we'd go back one and see the whole series through. And uh, we've decided to go for um, The Amazing Spider-Man to watch first because the request was for Amazing Spider-Man 2, obviously. Um, this is not the Tobey Maguire 1, 2 and 3, this is the Andrew Garfield version. So thanks to Zachary for requesting number two, and I realised I hadn't actually seen the first one. So I we figured we'd go from in sequence. Yeah, um, I've seen all the Spider-Man films um, because Spider-Man is one of my like ultimate characters that I've loved with with Marvel comics. Um, so I was very excited to kind of see the Tobey Maguire ones, and I love the way that they were produced and the way they came to screen. With Amazing Spider-Man was something different and it was doing a different take on it and taking more from the comics more than the, the first one's done. They were a bit, Tom Maguire ones I would have said were a bit more cheesier really. They were kind of more in the realm of Fantastic Four, um, not the most recent one, the other ones with Jessica Alba in it. Um, those kind of ones, it was kind of done in a cheesy way. I hadn't understood how to do comic book heroes quite yet really. Um, so yeah, so it was great to be able to um, review these two films actually, because we're we're going to watch uh, two just after this actually as well, so we can then give you all of the uh, the download with how that went. Uh, but of course, our first impressions of the first first film. Uh, what do you think? The first film, right? I uh, I sorry, I didn't watch the first one originally. Yeah. The reason being that the third of the Tobey Maguire ones put me off Spider Man. Utterly. Yeah. Now, fortunately, my very quick beginning to this review is that this one, this one fixed a lot of those yeah. issues for me. It's um, it's a good film. Uh, Andrew Garfield does an incredible job. He, he plays the gawky teenager uh, really well, and um, yeah. and you kind of you do get the impression when when he starts to grow into his into his powers and he starts realizing he's a little bit more than he was, oh. that the cockiness starts coming through, but it's not a forced cockiness, it really does feel like it's a kind of a cockiness yeah. that's breaking out because he's got more confidence to do it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's, um, it, it is definitely a truer representation of the comic book character that I loved so much. Really well done. And holding on to the fact that he was intelligent as well, that he was uh, working out formulas, that he was kind of figuring out certain uh, scientific breakthroughs, electronics, all those sort of things were really good and kind of kept the, the character as as close to the comics as you could possibly get. But um, it was definitely better to see a, a much more sort of quirky side and sort of sarcastic side to Spider-Man more than the Tobey Maguire yeah. ones. That's, that's definitely what you sort of, you got from that. Um, the other great thing about it as well is actually the level of, of, of acting skill that was put in this and of course Andrew Garfield is fantastic you've also got Emma Stone in as Gwen Stacy which was a great great idea to do because I know Spider-Man 3 was a <laughs> major letdown but this representation of Gwen Stacy was right and it was exactly right as it was in the comics as well it was done really well you understood how much of a great relationship and great person that she actually was and how she helped Peter Parker and everything as well so it, that came through really really well um, and also it was it was great to be able to see because you hadn't seen it yet it was great to kind of like I had so I had to keep my mouth shut as we were watching it um, but it was great to see the realisation of each character as they came through um, and at the start of course it dealt with Peter Parker's parents which actually hasn't been done in films before yeah. which was great to kind of give a little bit of a side, a, a different story to the the way it wasn't like, wasn't like the origin story that everyone kind of knows. You know, everyone kind of just knows the whole thing about Uncle Ben. You know, yeah. that's that's all people really understand about Spider-Man stuff. But this actually gave 
the parents side of it and what was going on and why they left and why he was left with his aunt and uncle. Um, yeah, I mean, the origin story has always been a bit um, a bit of a bugbear with me because I tend to play about with it every single time they remake any superhero. Mm. They'll play about with the origin story. And uh, the Tobey Maguire ones, I thought they were quite good. They took the they took the origin story, but they brought it up to date. Back when Spider-Man was first written, nuclear yeah. power was the big thing and everything was going to solve our problems. Now it's genetic engineering. It's the, <laughs> it's the huge advancement. And so it was clever. They brought, yeah. they, they had this effectively the same story, but they had the twist of something, a technology that people do find futuristic. So we don't think radiation is futuristic yeah. anymore. Um, this one, the parents, I don't know, that, that whole thing felt a bit like it was kind of just forced in there. It come it made me think of the incredible the incredible Hulk one where you know the whole thing was that his uh, what, his the father the had Eric done. Banner one. Yeah. Oh, and goodness I, me. I don't like it when they try to almost give a give a lineage to these origin stories. So it basically it um oh it, the, the father yeah. ended up creating all this but see even even that was produced by um by by Marvel in a way to kind of bring 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 it up to date. Bring it as a more fresh sort of approach to comic book movies. But again, I think all of that era kind of made it very. I don't want to say cheap. It's not exactly cheesy. It's just it's very family friendly, very kid friendly. Really, it wasn't really for the adults who'd grown up with the comics and knew the story, so wanted to sit down with their kids. I know I keep on saying it. I don't even have kids, and I keep on saying this. But it is it's a it's a reference that I always say is that it is bringing. Bringing your children, if you've grown up with it and you have kids, you bring your kids to be able to watch these films and go, look, this is, you know, this is my, ch my childhood. This is what brought me to my state in life. And I kind of want that influence onto you as well. And to have it in film is so good for the, for the you know, for my generation and future generations in the future, you know, to, to have this kind of outlet to be able to show these stories. Um, and the one thing that's always true about Marvel as well is that the, the, char the characters themselves in all the comic books are flawed. They're all flawed. And then something happens to them that makes them special in some way. Um, and they, their lives are turned around, yet they have to live an ordinary life at the same time. And it's that struggle between, uh, which I think is even more prominent in Spider-Man comics more than any other sort of superhero, is that whole thing is that he's this, he is this geeky kid and he can't, he doesn't show off his powers, he doesn't do anything like that, he doesn't try and make himself more popular or anything like that. He still struggles at school, struggles at college, struggles in life, you know, has all of these personal problems which are all a real shame. And I think actually that's what this film brought to light. You actually had a lot more in-depth story. And I know that the parents was kind of a bit of a... It was kind of a bit thrown in. But then you got the understanding of why Uncle Ben and Aunt May were so was such a good choice for him to be able to grow up and have this stability and instill these kind of good morals into into life as it as it goes and especially the fact that through fate he then actually becomes a hero and actually can do the things that they've sort of brought him up to do he actually yeah. has this response but well with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> and that's that's instilled in in that you understand it now why he's with these older generation because it feels like the older generation knew what life should be about and not, not to be so fickle with things. Just to pick up on something you said in that, uh, in that part, you said about him not showing off his powers, and there's one a couple of the things which annoyed me about this yeah. film. Uh, I say overall, I like the film. However, <laughs> uh, on at least four occasions, five occasions, he gave away his identity completely. And, and so, I did the same thing in the Tobey Maguire ones. No, I, I know. It's but, kind of a bit... But this one was even more obvious. The very first time you see his powers being displayed, it's, oh. they, it's accidental. He's on a tube, and he, <laughs> and basically all of these but things... But they did the same thing in the Tobey Maguire I know, ones. I know. They did exactly but the same thing. But there thing. are at least, what, there's six people in that carriage that, that <laughs> as soon as they saw... Drunk. The, <laughs> drunk. Yeah, but still. As soon as they saw Spider-Man on news, we instantly know, oh, I reckon that's the same as the other guy was doing. I know his face. 
<laughs> do a photo fit. Yeah, yeah easy. <laughs> it can easily do a photo fit. Given, but you're drunk at the time, right? Yeah, but now we believe you because this guy has actually come up. <laughs> and given, given how much um, J. Joe and Jameson is trying to get hold of the guy, he definitely would have paid for somebody to do a Who photo fit. doesn't make an appearance? <laughs> no. No, that's... I was I so like disappointed with no. that because that is one of the best characters in, in Spider-Man. It's this whole guy... Like everyone else, like the whole of... Uh, the the Tobey Maguire ones, uh, we keep on referring to, but the ones in there, it really was kind of like... Spider-Man was the voice of New York, so when when New York was being attacked, New York would come up and, and help help Spider-Man. Like, yeah, Spider-Man, yeah. And JJ was always the one who kind of was like, oh, he's a vigilante, yeah. he's a menace to society. And, the only one. And as things are as things are now, where the newspapers have got way too much control over people's lives, it would have been even more fitting for them to have this yeah. this um, this this media uh, outrage. And you know what they should have done? Now, Stanley's uh, obligatory cameo in this oh, was brilliant so good absolutely fantastic but I think they should have made him into J. Jonah Jameson he could have had a bigger part I think he's perfect no because then he would have, perfect. You've, you would have had to have him for the for the, any other he's in every Marvel film anyway no I know but he, <laughs> <laughs> but that's just as a cameo he can't he can't do I do, but full... he, he looks like Jonah Jonah Jameson <laughs> no but no because the guy who did it in um in the original uh, and the Spain, Maguire, no, no, Maguire he was awesome. stuff, no he was awesome was yeah. just the best as soon as I saw a picture of him I was like yeah, uh, the first Tobey Maguire film is the best Spider-Man film, but I actually think Andrew Garfield is a better is a better Peter Parker. I think he portrays the character a lot better. I yeah. I prefer that, and the fact that they also go from rather than him having uh, the origins origins version of the spider webs, which were yeah, I definitely prefer that the yeah. whole mechanical spider webs. Uh, yeah, the, the, the mechanical spider webs because of the fact that you're showing he is an intelligent science geek. And that was what was so good about him is that he he was this kid, but he designed all this stuff in his bedroom. It was amazing, and it was just it, it just shows just what level of intelligence he was, and the fact that he could get himself out of these situations. Mm. You know, with, with being Spider-Man, he was a quick thinker. He's able to get get himself out, make these quips whilst still <laughs> throwing webs around. That was one thing actually was quite odd. Uh, up until he visited Oscorp. You don't get the impression that he is some kind of big science nerd. Uh, yeah, with, you get um, the idea he's a no, with photographic Chris, nerd. No, no, with with Gwen Stacy. Yeah, when, when, say, when she does. But no, 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 no. But that's it. When you get when he gets to Oscorp and he answers the professor's oh, right, question, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Gwen says that he's old second in. But up until that point, there's no indication that he's some big intelligent science nerd. No, it's just he's. An, I'm not saying that's just, a bad thing, but I'm saying no, it's, it's, it's an odd thing. Yeah, he's seen as just a as a nerd mm. kind of thing, really. Which is mostly a bit of a creepy nerd with this camera all the time. That's a bit weird. No, he was. I. I mm. Well, that's pictures. No, no, it was Uncle Stacey. Ben that made him feel, made him look like a creep. No, no, by no, saying, no, 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 no. He's got pictures of you on his, he does. On his computer. It's it like, zoomed in. No, it's, Uncle, no. <laughs> it's on his. It's on his computer screen. It's zoomed yeah. in. Right? It's a bit creepy. <laughs> it was, he's in love, dude. <laughs> He's not a stalker because she likes him too. No, all right. He becomes if not it a wasn't stalker. reciprocated. If yeah. it wasn't reciprocated, I'd completely be on your side on that one. But it is reciprocated, and you see just how sweet she is as well. Gwen Gwen Stacy was the best girlfriend that Spider Man has ever had. I have to say, from now on, Emma Stone should be in every Spider Man film made, no matter what. She was amazing. Fine, she, she is brilliant. Amazing. I mean, she is great. She is by no, she is by far the, the best companion that Spider Man's had, and uh, yeah. No, she's perfect. She was dead on perfect. I mean, yeah, to be fair, the casting in this in this film was pretty good. It was all awesome. in all, it was awesome because it was. I I think it gives it gives a lot of credibility to the actors because of the fact they were able to read the script over, and um, what I also love as well is the director Mark Webb. Who? How fitting is that name? <laughs> you just know he walked in, he walked into uh, Sony and said, "I'm made for the job." <laughs> it's literally that name just stuck stuck out. Right, yeah, quite literally. Um, <laughs> if, he, he was, if he didn't he go into that meeting brilliant. and yeah. throw some fake webbing at them, then he's not doing his job right. No, exactly. <laughs> and you can buy those things. It's great. Um, he did such a good job in bringing the story to life and also giving giving space and 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 also giving the time to each scene as well, so that it, was, it never felt rushed. No, never felt rushed the whole way through. No, the pacing was great. great, and it felt mature. And that was one of the things that I think was missing from the from previous films was that it really made it feel it modernized it, but it made it feel like it was 
you know, like it felt like the, the, the way that Marvel characters are, are, you know, that there were vulnerabilities, that there were real, you know, dealing with real life and that there were problems in, in life as, as it sort of went on. But it was, oh God, it was, it was just so, so well done, well shot as well. It was a beautiful cinematography. There was, so, there was some lovely scenes of the city. It's, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. And on the casting though, because we haven't mentioned them. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah, Uncle Ben and Aunt May. Brilliant casting, fantastic two of our favourite actors, yeah, Sally them. Fields yeah. and Martin Sheen, and they were brilliant. I mean, they were so great, hands down the best, uh, yeah. the best in the role so far. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's it was so. I mean, it was so so good. Obviously, I mean, with the original Tom McGuire ones, that they were older because you know, I, and Aunt May in in all of the comics has always been great hair. You know, that's. That's the way that character's always been. However, she's lasted way past her prime. Um, <laughs> she's she's always been grey hair, but she's never died. Um, Despite the fact that oh, no, she's, no, she's, that's, yeah. well, she's been bounced <laughs> off the wall by a few super villains as well in the comic books. She, still well, she did get eventually. shot yeah, as well with the whole yeah. Origins thing. Anyway, <laughs> but, um, oh God, and Jarvis as well looking after her and stuff. God, that was amazing. Yeah, because that was during the whole Civil War as well. That the um, Sorry, we're talking about comic books now. <laughs> but it was... I, I mean, it's a thing. I think you can't help it. We can get away with most um, with most superheroes in films. You can kind of ignore the comic books. Spider Man has been such a has got oh, such yeah. a legacy, and not just not just because of his his length of time in comic books, but because he's rarely hit a bum note. I mean, it's always there's been some bad story arcs, but oh. overall, I think he's probably the hands down creatively the most successful comic book character. Yeah, like DC has Superman, and Marvel have Spider Man. I mean, that's those are the two characters that pretty much everyone ever knows. If you ever mention any sort of superhero, those are the two that people really instantly know as a majority, not talking about, you know, specific people. But it's so, yeah, so it is really important to be able to bring this character to, to life and to do it right. Um, I think that's why they've been more careful with Spider-Man and his origin story than they have other, su other superheroes. Yeah, this I think one, because it's, this one it's was more done, important. Yeah, this one was done in a very modern way and I actually felt probably a bit more na definitely a lot more natural actually because it wasn't it wasn't a setup it wasn't kind of like uh, you know trying to impress anyone or if it, it was literally just like a teenage rebellion kind of thing yeah so you, you kind of got it and then when you realized what he was then doing af after the whole Ben incident and you kind of went I, I get now what his motivations are for yeah 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 being the character and actually they do the way he f fought crime <laughs> you know they do make a, the, the Ben incident because obviously he always blames himself from the comic books to, to the to the but but they really hammered it home in this film I mean yeah the poor guy he they, they made certain that it was definitely his fault <laughs> the whole thing and it's it's really you can kind of see where it's gone but that's uh, so the yeah. whole thing and it's also part of the acting as well when yeah. he first gets his powers and obviously he's got all of these, all the adrenaline going for his body and all these different powers suddenly coming on. And he acts complete like he's stoned. And I think it's brilliant. <laughs> it's, I mean, it is. It's, it's such a perfect way of, of encapsulating the idea where you've got all of these new sensations suddenly. And so he's acting like yeah. he's high. And it's, I think it's a really good good portrayal. It's incredible acting by Andrew Garfield. Like, you mean like a, a sort of, a, like an overload? Like kind of, yeah, it's like yeah, sensory yeah. overload. Okay. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's funny, I, I, I think that's probably the best... The best way I've seen it portrayed in a film. Yeah, because in the, cause the Tom McGuire one, he was sick and had a fever yeah, and stuff, didn't he? And then kind of went went from scorny kid to suddenly like Hulk. Um, I don't know what that was all about because it, it, he's never been like he's always been a scrawny kid in the comics. Yeah. So I don't understand why he suddenly developed all these abs and big muscles. It didn't make any sense. Whereas the um, Andrew Garfield one was. Brilliant, because he was yeah. he was scrawny. Well, not you know, not scrawny scrawny. Obviously, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he can't possibly have a Hollywood actor looking scrawny. <laughs> that would be wrong. No. Um, but it's uh, but <laughs> but he, he he looks like a normal a normal teenager, and he's um, and all you all you really get a sense of is he's got enhanced what he already has has been enhanced, which is exactly what Spider Man should be. Yeah, it's yeah, everything is multiplied. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, which goes back to your your, your point about the fact that when when he goes through the change, that set like yeah, mm. a century overlap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, I, it was all uh, yeah. The, the the gravitas given to all of the characters and the way that he interacts and the fact that he does 
yeah, it's totally his fault. But that, but you're you're right because that is that's what the the whole drive was with 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 Peter. It wasn't the fact that he was. I mean, he was Spider-Man for the sense of duty, but also through that pushture of guilt. Yeah. The fact that he knew he'd let down his his uncle, the one person who'd looked after him since he was a, a kid, and he'd completely let him down just through teenage rebellion, effectively. Mm. Um, so yeah, it really. Oh, yeah, it really hits hits home. Gives yeah, they, much more yeah, they to completely it, yeah. amplified it, and he, he did play off that yeah. really well. And so you it do was go, great. I don't you know, you know do why people idea. say yeah. Andrew Garfield wasn't great. No, no, no. I've, he was I've really, seen, really good. I've seen that, and the acting I think was spot on. He uh, for me, yeah, he, he he nailed that role. Yeah, and it was one of those. It was one of those things because, of course, everyone everyone complained, you know, to the point of where obviously Marvel Studios and Sony came to an agreement, which is why we've now got a new Spider-Man that will be coming to our screens very shortly. Um, but it was... But I don't understand where that came from, because of the th with the first three, yeah, I kind of... I get it. Characters are done... Although Spider-Man 2 was very good. No, That was, was very well written, very well acted, um, and very well directed as well. That was great. Um, now, the first two, but, the first two Tobey Maguire Spider-Man... Were good films. Yeah, they yeah. were genuinely good films. They were good. They were good films, this, total and good superhero films. Yeah, but this one felt so much, so much better. Like it really had sort of grown and matured. It was mm. just so good. The quality was just amazing. So I don't understand why people were so anti Sony because I thought they'd done an extremely good job. Um, how you know? However, I mean, you know, things obviously didn't pan out like that. But I guess it's kind of good that Spider Man did come home. Uh, yeah, so uh, New Year, and we're just going to sit down and watch number two. I'm not looking forward to it. No, 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 don't, no, don't, don't, <laughs> don't worry about all the negativity or anything like that. Literally, you have to go with an open mind. Oh. I am going to keep my mouth shut the whole time, which is going to be very hard for me to do. Apart from when the numbers come up, then you'll understand something bad's going to happen. Um, but, okay. <laughs> but other than that, I'm not going to tell you anything about what's going on or anything. Just. Just watch it afresh and just see what happens. I can't wait to see his reaction. And literally, we're going to film straight after and just get that first reaction from him. It's going to be brilliant. Um, cool. So, yeah, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for watching. I guess we'll see you in a couple of days when we see what my reaction to number two is. Oh, oh it's going to be great. <laughs> Bye, Flickers. Bye. Thanks for watching the video and if you did like it then please hit the like button and if you want to see more from us then please hit subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment below and if you've got any suggestions for films that we should be reviewing in the future please leave us a nice little message. Oh and check out our previous videos.